Okay, we are live, but we will be a minute, as you can see from the sign. Is it live? Is it live it's live. It's live. Bro. It's the live. Okay. Is that the blinking red light? Okay. Is live. my hand shaking? Am I shaking? Okay. Oh, okay. we got one. I'm just going to call it out. We have one follower. It's you, Ryan. It's one. It's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it oh, actually, I, I do. I should check it out. Let's see here. <clears throat> Okay. Do you know what you're going to talk about? Uh, you better get it ready. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's these people, ready. they're not going to... Shoot from the hip. It's all improvised. Will Peak is watching. We got heavy hitters. That's right. Hey, Will. We're going to start in a minute. See this? But if we use the front-facing camera... That's right. It's, it's backwards. Yeah. But what if people use their front-facing camera to watch this? If they use their front... Well, we'll turn this around. <laughs> 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 but this bed doesn't make waves. Neil, hey. to, oh, there we are. Let me go ahead and just sign on here. Okay. Oh, here we are. Let me go ahead. Share. Right I'm sharing it. Man, Bud didn't call me this time. Uh -oh. Is he on it? No, I'm watching though. Oh, Ian Sim is on. Okay, we're getting some. We got some people. My watch is broken. So. Wasn't on the Facebook. Page. We don't know when this is going to start. Mm -hmm. I want to show Ian Sim my, my third floor remodel there you my, go. of my house. I yeah, think, he would enjoy I, that. I, I think he could help me. In yeah. Jake, Jake Swanson is watching. Hey, Jake. Hey, from Okinawa. Oh, we got Turn your volume down. Feed, holy, we got some feedback here. Holy delays. Yeah, we got some delays. Matt Budd finally joined us. Yeah. He must have yeah, to, oh, uh, let's see here. We got, to put on, we got to put on comments. I don't think the comments are on. What do you mean? From... Go ahead. Let's see. Mystery mask. You don't want that. Uh, oh no, comments are on. I'm gonna do that thing that says allow people to join. Yeah, let, me, let, me, let me see. Send request. See if it works. Nothing. Give it. Oh, Matt Butt is on. Whew, that's good. He still has a job. <laughs> you should post on your page to click on live on the side of Facebook page as it wasn't loading. Okay, Neil. Matt Bud is home. Matt Bud, get is, on that. He is doing it. He's <laughs> quote unquote working from home. Working from home. <laughs> Just kidding, Matt. We know you're there. You're working. He's making tea in his underwear, sitting back watching. Yeah. I saw that thing you told me to watch. <laughs> that show. Oh, oh did you? Tiger, Tiger King. Tiger oh. King. Yeah, you're right. The it first is. one's weird, and then it has the twist. It is. And then I and saw it's like an onion that just yeah. unravels. I haven't got to the raveling. It's hard because I'm. I don't. You know, I too much screen time. It's yeah, amazing. it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. So hey, Ian. hey, Ian. hey, Ian. Should we oh, begin? Terry's on. Yeah, uh, we got 22. Yeah, we might as well go ahead and start now. Are we not started? Oh, did we already start? <laughs> I think we're starting. Oh, how's my hair? Oh, jeez. Okay. All right, let's do this. Should I? Okay, we are going to do, today we are going to talk about making a hinge rod yeah. and Ryan. There's Kurt. Ryan is going to talk about making a hinge rod and um, I'm going to show you how to oil a instrument. And this one is a saxophone. But they are all the same. Okay. So... You got two basic kind of oils, two basic ways to oil for the player. You kind of have the quick and dirty method, and then you have the slow, thorough, and a little bit scary method. Uh, let's do the quick and dirty method first. I should have a paper towel. So the quick and the quick and dirty method is basically not basically. If you're gonna, to oil your instrument, need, need a piece of paper towel. Oh, thanks. There you go. That's nice. I'll always. <laughs> <laughs> to oil your instrument, you want to put less than a drop of oil everywhere that metal touches metal. So, you know, like, can you get in here, right? If, if you look at what a drop is, I mean, that that's a lot. That's too much oil. And you, if you put that much on each side of a key, that's going to be too much. So what you want to do is less than a drop. And how do you do less than a drop? Well, you use this needle, or you could close the end of this off and do something creative, but I, I never really found the need. Here's what I do. If this is the part I wanted to oil... I would just start and then touch it before the whole drop came out. And even that might be too much. I would just get the oil started and then touch it. So that's a little less than a drop. Okay, so everywhere that metal touches metal. So where is metal touching metal on this beautiful saxophone? Um, metal's touching metal where keys touch right there. Uh, 
metals touching metal where a key touch, touches the post. Right there. Um, technically, you got some metal touching metal here, but I never oil the end of a the end of a rod. Mm -hmm. But if you put a tiny amount, it wouldn't kill anybody. I don't I don't think you need to. Um, there's a flaw in my idea. Metal touches metal where the spring is hooked on the cradle. Ryan just finished this horn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. It's yeah. good, Ryan. Right? Bad. Um, so metal touches metal where the spring hits the cradle. So let's oil those areas. Just touch right here where they where these two pieces touch and less than a drop. Now I can move this key and see where these two keys are gonna touch. And then just put less than a drop and then let it work in. Less than a drop here, less than a drop here, and let that work in. I think these pads you put in there are too hard. A little, right? little, little too noisy. So when you're, really doing that, when you're doing that version, uh, oh, and flat springs. Right here, a flat spring hits a cradle. And I'll put in a little less than a drop. I don't know if I got it. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the camera. but And then work it into the flat spring. And that's basically it. Everywhere metal touches metal. But what, what would happen that was bad with your oil is that you would put too much on and it would get down onto the, onto the materials. Um, yeah, somebody just commented he had a customer that decided to oil his own sacks and oiled all the corks and wondered why they fell off. That's right. So, yes. That's so, yeah, you wouldn't want to just metal touching metal, no no cork and, and yeah, don't do that. no and felt oiling. Maybe, that's a, uh, maybe this is the time to tell you about, about this stuff. So, when I was looking for an oil uh, to, to, to use on instruments I was fixing primarily and then in a secondary, because this was a long time ago, to, to sell... I wanted an oil that wouldn't break down adhesives. So you need something that's inert and synthetic and that, that won't get in. Um, a petroleum-based oil will break down the adhesive and it will thin it out and then, the, and then the, the cork will fall off. This oil, you can basically glue two pieces of cork together and then soak it in the oil and the two pieces of cork don't come apart. Now, if you get oil on a thing and the, cork is, the glue is in there and it's sticky and it comes apart, it might restick and you might have better luck. You get oil on it and it comes apart, it's not going to come back together no matter what oil. So don't get oil on your, on your felts and stuff, but the synthetic oil that we use, this Ultimax, it doesn't break down adhesives. The other thing that I like about the Ultimax, so we just talked about the quick and dirty method. If I was doing the quick and dirty method, which is basically don't take the keys off, um, and if that's the only way a player should really oil their horn, I would use the low or more likely the medium. Flute, clarinet, I'd use the low and uh, the medium for saxophone or larger clarinets because you need the oil to work its way in. But if you're doing the other method, you could use, say, the high viscosity. Um, this... This so oil. the high, sorry to interrupt here, but not really. So the high viscosity, that's the thicker. That's the thicker The one. thicker the oil, the low is the thinnest. And what you're saying is when you oil it the quick and dirty way to get it to flow, you're going to use the low viscosity, so the thinnest oil. The thinnest oil, yeah. right. Yeah. Didn't I say that? You, you okay. did. I'm oh, just, okay. yeah, I'm just clarifying. Thanks a lot. So if you mix, if you mix <laughs> the low and the high, you would actually get the medium, which mm. is cool because if you wanted something between low and high, you could just mix the two together. Mix your own viscosity. Mix your own viscosity. Nice. And then, and then this is the cork grease that comes along with it. Uh, let's get into the to the to the longer, more difficult, scarier method. Yeah. This... Okay. So the the cork grease that comes along with it is nice for cork, but it's also made from the same chemical as the low, medium, and high. Um, that means you can mix the cork grease with these and create different viscosities of grease or oil depending on whether you mix more oil or more grease. So why is that important? Um, look at this key. Let's look at this B flat key here. Uh, I mean, you see how noisy it is, yes. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oiling's going to only help that so much. You know, Ryan's, Ryan, he fixes all well, we're, 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 we're working on it. I'm Where's cooking that it. screwdriver that I'm I'm uh, cooking a thing. Let me grab my screwdriver. I grabbed your screwdriver. Uh, okay. So the slow and dirty method would be to, I don't have a spring hook, would be to disconnect your spring on a key that you're going to take off. If taking off a key is at all scary, then don't do this. Don't do this method. In fact, I wouldn't do this at all. I mean, if you're, I don't, I don't oil my own horn this way, always take the keys off. But if you have one key that, that is sluggish or you think has a problem, you, you could possibly take it out if you feel comfortable. If you don't, don't do it. Um, taking it out, if you feel like you might bung up the, the slot, 
in the end when you take it out. If you're feeling that way as you're turning it, just stop. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel comfortable with that, that's the mistake yep. that you probably make is bung that up. So, um, so what I did is I disconnected the, the spring and I took the rod out here and now I can take the key off, right? So one thing I can do is, or the first thing I can do is just wipe the rod off. Now the rod is nice and clean. And I can take a pipe cleaner. I like to take all the loose pieces off my pipe cleaner. And I can run a pipe cleaner through the key. A lot of times this will come out black and mucky, but this is a, a horn that's being worked on. And now the key is nice and clean. I usually blow any seat, make sure I didn't get any pipe cleaner dust, and then feel this going through here. If the rod looked remarkably tarnished um, or uh, corroded, or, uh, you could take off the dirt with some, I use this 30 micron paper and uh, I might just have a little piece of it. This is really fine. This is not, uh, I could polish my yeah, nails. Yeah, it's not, this. not aggressive at all, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not aggressive and, and, and you're not trying to, if a rod is, is bent, you're not trying to make it work by shining it. Yeah. But this will shine it up and make things smoother. Kind of um, remove that, the, the, you know, like you said, the corrosion, old oil greases caked on. Yeah. Yep, and I'll clean this up. Neil says, similar to micro mesh, yes, yeah, it's similar. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is, yeah. yep, yep. And I have that working through there nice and smooth. So here is how I would do the longer, more difficult version or the scarier version. It's only scary if it scares you, and if it scares you, don't do it. Don't do it, yeah, uh, don't do it. It scares you, don't do it. Um, I'll just, maybe I can use this to prop that up. Is that better, Ryan? It's a little bit better, yeah. Um, it's it's better for me. Yeah. Let's see. So... First thing, I, I, don't, I should have a way to hold this guy. There we go. I might put a little bit of cork grease onto the rod. And I like to do that because I feel like the cork grease is gonna stay stuck to the rod. It's gonna keep it from rusting. And a lot of times, and it makes, it makes the horn quieter and feel better. I mean, it fills in and it really does stay for years. <clears throat> so I put the cork grease on there. Now I know from experience that this cork grease Maybe not in this key, but this cork crease in general is going to be a little too thick. And also, I want it to fill in all the spaces there. So what I'll do in this instrument, on this key, is I would take a little medium and just put a little medium in there. I'm, I'm putting in, I, you get used to it, but I'm just putting in about a drop. And it, it doesn't matter if I put in too much. It'll come out the other end. Um, yeah, that's and you got your... And I'll clean it up. Paper towel. My paper towel. I'll put it right here. And be yeah, ready, just, right? just ready. Then, with my grease on the rod and the oil inside there, I'm just going to work this guy in. And I can see some grease and oil coming out of here. And that makes me feel good. And that makes me feel like I'm getting the, the wear area, which is here and down here. And... I'll just tighten this up, see what kind of grease and oil came out the other end. None actually did, which that means maybe maybe I could have put a little bit more in there um, and let a little bit come out. And then I could feel this. And if I feel like this was too sluggish, it feels great. But if I felt like this was too sluggish because the grease was too thick, I could back this out. And I could put a little bit more medium or even low, but I, I wouldn't on a saxophone. Probably medium would be fine because this isn't actually too sluggish. But I could back it out and I could thin that grease just a little bit more and put this together. And this may seem a little extens extensive for oiling, but I mean, you only oil once a year maybe or every... With this, Twice a year or yeah, something like that. It that. doesn't. It's not like something you're going to be doing every day right and, before you play. Yeah, and with right. the Ultimax... We're, it's not evaporating, so so in normal oil, if you put it onto a, a bench block, uh, and, and you can do this in your home or shop, and then and then the, the synthetic or the natural oil will evaporate over time. The Ultimax really doesn't evaporate, so it's just kind of sits there and sits there. Okay, that's the uh, that's the, the the scarier method. Speaking of scarier, scarier 
and our shop dog is happy that my part of this video is over. But uh, it's time you go, to wrap it up. Let me just show you these. This is so the Ultimax comes in. The Ultimax comes in needle oilers of three viscosities. The cork grease is what I use for oiling keys. The 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 pivot and roller. Uh, oh, I didn't do I didn't do pivot screw keys. Let me do a pivot screw key for you. Sorry. There's, the pivot and roller is for pivot screw keys, and the cork crease and the pivot and roller both come in syringes. So let's put some pivot and roller in the end of a in the end of a key here. I'll take out this guy. I'll take my spring off. My spring is off, and all I'm going to do on this pivot screw key. Pivot screw keys have screws on both sides. One here and one down here. Hinge rods have a slot on one side, like if you look here, has a slot on one side, and on the other side is where the rod comes out. So your pivot screw keys, you can see a slot on both sides. So I take this key, I took out my pivot screw, and what I would do here is just take my pivot and roller. All these oils are inert and they're food grade. They, they don't change viscosities with temperatures that we normally use. So you can eat them, you can't cook with them because this grease won't even melt in a pan. Um, but since they're inert, you could mix the pivot and roller and then put a little oil in. But I almost never do, not on a saxophone because the pivot and roller going in there is enough. I put a little pivot and roller into the hole. And in this, I might put a drop on these threads, just a little bit of oil on the thread to protect them. The pivot and roller would probably be in there too, right in those threads to protect it as well. And then put my screw on and feel the key. Okay, that's your, uh, that's your two ways to oil an instrument and that is oiling a saxophone. Let's look yeah. at making a rod. Quick and dirty, and then the, the scary. This is, this is even scary. If you thought making a rod, uh, oiling your sax was scary. Let's do this. I will be the cameraman for Ryan. Thanks, Roger. Roger says thanks for sharing. So, so now, yeah, oh, hold on a second. Will Peak says, I mix the pivot and roller grease with medium viscosity for uh, oil for clarinet pivots. Oh, cool. Nice. Thanks, Will. That's thanks, so Will. Nice, yeah, nice thing about the Ultimax, you can kind of custom tailor. If it's too thick, you can thin it out. If it's too thin, you can thicken it up. Cool. Cool. Let's make a rod. Yeah, we're going to make a rod. So we're going to make a rod. Um, Show you kind of what I'm using here. The first thing I'll be making a rod using a lathe. Um, you can use a, a bench motor for this, um, but we use uh, mainly the lathe here uh, in the shop for making rods. Um, I do have some of the stuff that I have out. Let's kind of zoom in here, Kurt. Huh? Sure. Let's see what you some got of over things here. Things that I have. Brian's bench always looks so fun. It is. It's got so many things. Yeah, it's like toy. It's like Toyland over here. Okay. Um, so you can see a couple of things. These are the dies um, that I actually use to cut the the threads. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have my thread checkers for if I'm unsure of um, what threads I'm cutting. Uh, I got standard, and then there's also metric. Um, this is also standard as well, but there's um, standard and then metric. Um, since, you know, you, depending on where the saxophone comes from, this is a King Super 20, so this is going to use a lot of the standard uh, measurements like 348, 256. If you have like a Selmer or a Yamaha, you're going to be using millimeters, you know, 1.8, 0.5, 35, uh, 3.5, and all that. So you got to have, and you can see here, this is the taps and dies rule. So all the different taps and dies metrics. Let's see what you got going on in, whoops, in Ryan's dirty little secret down right. here. Oh, yeah. So you got them all uh Got them all organized. All and organized. I usually have my dies along with the taps. If you order dies, definitely order taps with it. And you can see all my, over here as well, my my extra And these are, oh, extra yeah, you got dies some that metric I use quite dies. a bit of, quite a bit of metric 2.5 by 0.45. Okay. So. Speak up, Ryan. Yep. That's right. what I'm told. We can't hear you, so all speak right. up. can't hear me. All right. Um, so... The first thing you're going to do, this is the rod that we're going to be remaking. This is from, if you tuned in last week, this was from the King Super 20 where we did our octave rocker modification. I'm going to now be cutting a rod for that. That horn's not done yet? Not yet. That not guy's yet. got a gig. Uh, so, 
first thing is to measure your existing rod and match it up with a new rod. I went ahead and did that ahead of time. So this is measuring, if we can see here, like 105. 105 on the dot, yep. 105, and this okay, is... Stay alive. Come on, 1045. 1045, so okay. that's, I guess, if, if that's good enough for you. It, it, it is. Yeah, it is. that's good. Sometimes I do go a little oversized um, if I'm going to be doing a lot of swedging, but the nice thing about these keys is they are pretty fairly tight to begin with. Okay, so I don't need to really do too much swedging with these. And nickel okay. keys. And nickel keys, too. So you're not, you don't, don't yeah. want to do too much You don't swedging. want to do too much swedging on nickel, yeah. That's, have we, that's... have, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So. <laughs> I wonder if we ever reamed <laughs> oversized in a nickel, in a horn with nickel hinge tubes, you know, have we had to go in and ream that out? I don't, I don't remember doing, that doesn't sound awesome. Somebody yeah, watching yeah. is like, I've done yeah, that. I've done and that. I, I do no it doubt all it the sucks. Time. It yeah. sucks because yeah. nickel is tough. It is. It's tough to sweat. So, um, Sorry, Ryan. Sorry. so I got my pre-cut rod here. Yep. Okay. And again, it's close. I do leave it a little long. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you why when we get. So this into is it. the one that you're. This is the one you're replacing. This is the one that I'm replacing. And this is your pre-cut piece. And this piece. is my pre-cut piece. You can see it. They just has the ends, just snipped off. And you you made it bigger because you're a good tech, and they get extra. You get exactly. A little extra, yeah. A little yeah. extra. Yeah, a little for big you guys. Yeah. Start okay. out small. So, okay. Keep talking loud. The board here, kind of my steps for actually making a rod, and I'm going to go quickly over those, and then I'm going to do it, and then hopefully. Call them out so you can see. So the first thing is, I'm going to chuck this up in the lathe, and you can see how it's just kind of a cut end. So we want to file that down. So we just take our file, just bevel it just a little bit. That's number two. That's what it'll look like at the end. Yep. Yep. The first thing I do is I, I use a parting blade, and, I, and I'll show you when we get to the lathe here. It's actually the third thing you do. That's the third. Sorry. Sorry. The third. Sorry. Third. The third. Thing third. Thing Thank you. Yes. So yep. First, third, second. Whatever. Yep. We're good. Um, good. Yep. So we make our shoulder we okay. go in a little bit. With a parting blade. With a parting blade. Okay. Said that. Uh, number four, we go and we actually cut this down to whatever um, diameter we're going to need to thread it. Okay, which is usually, if it's a 348, which is what we'll be cutting, it's usually a 099098 diameter. So that's what this will be cut down to. The next thing I'll do is in order for the, 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 the die to actually thread on, I'll just kind of bevel it just a little bit. Then you can see here, I've threaded it all the way up to that shoulder. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down the, um, the actual threads themselves. They'll be a little long, so I'll actually file those down. I go in and I make my shoulder. Once I do, I'll have some, some burrs, so I'll go and have to, to clean those up, and I'll show you how I do uh, all of that. And at the end, number nine is a fully complete, freshly cut threads. Okay? Okay. So here great. we go. Great, great. All right. So first thing, I'm going to chuck this up in my lathe. Not. To be clear, this is the lathe. This is the lathe, yeah. That's the, so the, anybody knows, this is the lathe. So this isn't the rod cut down. Right. Yeah. This is actually the rod yeah. sticking out of the lathe, Yeah. pointed. Exactly. That's why he cut a shoulder here, mm -hmm. and then he's coming in down here, and he's kind of cleaning it up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Isn't that right? Yeah. So like, yeah, what you said, Kurt, this part right here is just that rod sticking out. This here is just the lathe. That's just the lathe. Just the lathe. Don't I mean, worry about that. Yeah. Just nothing but a lathe. Nothing to see here, folks. See here. Move along. Okay, so you're All putting right. the... So I put it in just to kind of give you a, a little background. This is, uh, this is the chuck. I use a collet holder to hold my rods. Okay, that's this guy right here. And I tighten it up with this Sorry fancy, fancy looking wrench right here. Oh, there it Got is. Got it. Okay. Okay. So you put a collet holder... Put a collet holder in into my... Into the lathe. Into so the into, lathe. The three, into the four, four jaw, jaw chuck. chuck. So okay. you could use a regular... You could just pick the rod in there. You could just put it right in the chuck. But this so is you. you. To, but this is me. Yeah. I like to go above Extra. and beyond. Yeah. I like 17 pieces of flare. Right, right. It's required yeah. to only have 16. Right. So I go one above and beyond. It's good. Um, next thing you notice here, I am cutting it with a parting blade. Um, I know you machinists out there are going to be like, why is he cutting with a parting blade? Uh, I do it for a couple reasons to save time. So I'm not have to, having to switch back and forth. Traditionally, you would use to actually make cuts like I would, I would be doing would be a bit like this. So you're actually going using this. This parting blade here just comes in, and you can see it here. It's just a thin, a thin okay. piece, and that just comes in and just parts it off, cuts it off. But in this case, but in this case it's gonna be, you're going to use it, it as a yeah, cutter. Cutting. Uh, I'm not taking a lot off, which is why I'm able to use this as a cutter. Um, okay. So the first thing again, we're on our step one. It has a rough finish. We're gonna bevel that like in step two. And this is just to make the parting blade catch a little bit easier. Okay, talk loud if you're talking. All right, right here we go. 
All right, so there we are. That's step two. Okay, that's pointed. Pointed. All right. Thank you. So now I'm gonna go in with my parting blade. This is this number is three. This is gonna become step three. Okay, sorry, Ryan, I'm coming in. Hold on, he's going too fast, folks. This guy. Right. He's so here we are. Cut. Going a little bit more. Maybe go in just a Sparting. little bit more. Sparting, but don't part it back. off. That's oh. right. All right, so I've come back just a little bit. Let me just shut this off real quick. So what I do to make a nice clear shoulder is I'll go in, mm -hmm. and then I'll go in just a little bit more, and then just a little bit more. That way, when I bring this blade back, I can bring it back to the same point every time. Ah, okay, that just kind of makes it a nice clean shoulder. So that's my little tip that I like to do. That's All right. cool. That's so cool. we're going back on. Now I'm going to start to make my passes to trim this down. Okay. Very little, very little. So you're cutting there with that parting blade. Exactly, yeah. Traditionally, it's just used to just go straight in and plunge and in. Part. And part of, make a, you know, separate yeah. apart. Right. Now, are you using the gauges on the lathe, Ryan? I, I am, yes. To make this a little bit quicker, if you can see here, we have our digital readouts on our lathe. Okay. I've actually preset this so with this is, is at zero. It's at the right diameter. Okay. Okay. You may have to stop and measure uh, and do all that, but for for ease of use and getting used to using the DROs, uh, digital readouts, I've I've go ahead and I went ahead and preset it. So cool. we're back to cutting here. I just have a little bit more to go. So, you know, I come up to that shoulder every time. All right. This is live, folks. So anything could happen. Yeah, every anything can happen. Anything. Yeah. All right. So there we are. Very dangerous. All right, so this is the diameter we need. And I, I know this because of measurements and, and, and charts that I use. So this is the diameter I need to cut this down in order to get the die, which we are cutting, I don't know if you can see here, a 348. Okay, there it is right there. All right, so now we're at step four, okay? So we've just trimmed this down to the diameter that we need in order to thread it. What now I need to do is I just need to kind of give this a little bit more of a, of a bevel, of a chamfer, okay? That way the die will actually catch. Why are you doing that now and not back here? Um, that's a good question. Okay. You, you can right. do it there, but I just, I, I like it a little bit more of a, if you have a too gradual of an, of an angle. Okay. Okay, like right here. Trying yeah. to get that parting blade to actually catch is, is sometimes a little tricky. Oh, uh, like you're worried that you're ang square because then trying to get that parting blade to go on is a little bit tougher. That way, I have just kind of a just a little. Oh, little, little so bit like here, you're trying to thinking about cutting, and you've you've designed yeah. this sort of way since you're using the parting blade, exactly. and then down here you're setting it up for the tap yeah, or the exactly. die. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, just making just bringing this to be okay. A little bit more All right, of an angle like cool, that. cool. Okay. I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> All so right, we take let's our see file. We, let's see what we got. Turn this back on. Because it'll push a burr into the thread, Kurt. Okay. All right, Ian. Got to get an Ian live in this video. There go. So there we are. So there you just made it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, okay. More of a gradual angle. Now it comes time for threading. Okay. So I use okay. a little bit of cutting fluid, cutting oil. Okay. All right. We use this style die holder. Mulan. There's Mulan. Okay. We use this style die holder since we're cutting it on the lathe, but you can also use a tap handle as well. You put the die in there. If you're an animal. Yeah, if you're an animal. You're yeah. A savage. Yeah, hold that in your yeah, teeth. Here you go, you barbarians. <laughs> what uh, might as well whittle it away from Why do we even have that? I know. All right, so, let's see. So we use this. Okay. Back this guy out of the way, move this so you can see it. Mm, nice, nice quick change tool. Mm -hmm. Right up to it. And I do not do this under power. I never thread under power. It's always, you can see I've got everything locked down and I'm actually just going to do it by hand. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to come around to so, this side, Ryan. Sorry. So when I first started, I am giving a little pressure in this way towards the chuck on the die. Okay. okay but once it starts to catch, I'm not no longer pressing in. I'm just holding it. So here we are. It's, now it's catching. Now I'm not really pushing in further anymore. I'm just kind of rotating. I'll go in a little ways and then I'll bring it back and that releases and that cuts that chip off that you're, that you're creating in there. Go a little bit 
more. It's now it's called the Ian chip now. The Ian chip. Yeah, now. because it pushes. It's always a burn. It's a thorn in our side. Wait, hold on. We got Ian's got a comment too. All well, this. What do we got? Let's use a hand tool. Use the quill quill of the tailstock. Oh, whatever, man. No one can read that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Where are you from, Ian? All right. I'm All gonna, right. Sorry, so here we sorry. are. Go. Maybe I'll just rotation. Yeah. Go okay. back. Release that chip. When you get closer to that shoulder, you have to be careful. I don't know if you can kind of see in there. Yeah, when you get in close to that shoulder, see if I can kind of do this. Hey, uh, someone asked if the die holder comes with the, uh, the, the, the lathe, and the lathes are from Music Medic. This is a Music Medic lathe, and this, these are out of stock. Um, when, when and if they get in stock, it will come with the die holder, but the die holder, you can buy that at um, Little Machine Shop. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so you yeah, can get that there. A couple of ours. Yep, yep. So, so we're getting close to that shoulder, so I got to be careful. I don't want to ruin this nice little shoulder over here that I've created. Okay. See, if I thread in too far, it's going to round that out and chew that up. All right. So, gonna steps so you're going to you're going to stop a little yeah, early. So I'm going to stop a little early, which is probably right about there. Okay. So here we are. Look at that. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus in. Come on, focus here. Okay. Hello. So there we are, you can see it's threaded. There's my little bevel right there. There's the threads. And then right here is a little Nothing. space where there's no threads, but then you can see a nice clear shoulder right there. That's exactly what you want. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, we're on step number six. So I'm gonna trim this down. Now I left this a little long. We can bring our original rod up and see Whoop. Sorry, guys. how long it is. It is oh, yeah. quite a deal longer. Yeah. So I'm gonna just file that down from right about there, and I'm gonna leave probably this amount of length. You gonna file that much off? Yep. All right, let's see this. All right, here we are. He's calling it like Babe Ruth style here. You may have to get on. This Will had a comment, and Ian had a comment, but mm -hmm. the comment window is too small, folks. I, I can't seem to get well, in there, so. We'll come back and review Yeah, it. we could come back and review all right. I'm sorry. So, that's all right. Here we are, here it is. And this is a coarse file. A lot of times I like to finish it up with a fine file just to clean it up a little bit. And there we are. Okay, and just shorten it up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my parting blade back. And I'm gonna see if I can line that right up. Am I in your way, Ryan? No, you're good. Get that shoulder. Get Social right distancing, up. I'm not. All right. Hey, Julie, you came in late, but don't scroll back because this is live. So here we are. Now we're going to cut that shoulder. And a little bit further. All right. So you can see how the shoulder is actually lower, smaller diameter than your threads. That's exactly what you want. That's our shoulder right there. Great. After doing that, we're gonna to have to kind of rechase those threads because sometimes it makes a little burr at the very end of that. So we'll rechase our threads. We'll bring this in. And again, just kind of lightly run that until it reforms those final threads that we kind of cut off right there. Back it out. Look at that speed, ladies and gentlemen. The next thing is and you're gonna have a bit of a burr right on that corner. Okay, if we go back over here to number eight. Okay, so we did it, we, we shortened the, the threads. We now went in and made our, our, our sort of reformed our uh, shoulder here. Yeah. We went and rechased it. Now we're gonna have a little bit of burrs right there. Okay, if I try to put this rod into a key like this, it's gonna, it's gonna gouge it out. Right. And it's gonna scratch it up. So we gotta get rid of those burrs. So for that, I will use, and this takes a little bit of practice, I'll use a, um, a needle file, and we do sell a set of these. Really nice needle file, and this is the flat file, but on the edge here is, and it's very thin, is um, also where, where you can file. Okay, one side is blank, one side has some, some threads to it or some teeth to it. So, I'm gonna turn this on. 
And I used, like I said, the very edge, not the big wide flat part. I used the edge. Okay. okay. Like a surgeon, this guy. All right, can I take a sanding stick? Wow. And just kind of clean that up a little bit. And then, again, some of this 3M polish paper. Clean everything up. Great. Before I take it out, I kind of use my thumbnail to check to see if I've gotten rid of that burr and if it slides off easily and doesn't catch. Oh, that's cool. Then we know that there's yep. no burr. Now we can take it out of our lathe and then here it is so clean up dun, the dun, dun. Let's and see if you guys the can reveal see. the grand finale there they are oh my god fresh threads the, wow. the final check is to see if they fit in and for that again i leave them a little long so i like to use these pin vices to grab and hold on to them using our using medic depth seal pliers to tighten them up as well and we also sell the pin vices. That's great. Can we give Ryan, can Ryan get a like for that? I mean, that was, that was nice. That was a really nice demonstration. Nice, right. nice, little, nice little plug there. Yeah. There we are. Throw him a like. And you can see here, this is the final check. Nice. To see if that shoulder goes all the way up. Nice there. Now you can see what this is a little long. So I'd probably go back and mm. just file that down. Make sure I re recut. Would you mark things. that? You, would you, would you mark mm -hmm. that guy right there, Ryan? Let me get in there and see. Yeah, see, that's long, mm -hmm. sticking out the back. Yeah. We don't want that. Just a little bit. So what just would you do? Bit. Just kind of do it by eye? Take I would that just, much yeah. off and file at it? Or, yeah, or? it looks like about two threads. Yeah. Two, you know, two peaks worth. Two yeah. teeth worth. So yeah. I'll just take that off. Now, cutting it down, what I'll do, again, take our needle file, and I just make a little edge. Sorry, guys. Let me get in there, right? I file a little mark right there, right next to it. You can okay, see. yep. Okay. Back over to our lathe. Back over to our lathe. All right, we can see where the mark is. Now, now you're going to cut the slot in there. Yes, now I'm going to cut the slot. And I am going to, going to cut this part off, and I am going to use the parting blade for its intended purpose to actually part it off. Okay. Uh, one tip is you don't want this to be sticking out right this much. Okay. Okay. Because this is going to flex. I want to have that mark where I'm going to cut it off as close to this as possible. Right, so you can see the marks right there. Hmm. Uh, yeah, right so you know what? Oh uh, yeah. So when you get your saw in there, because you have it in the collet holder again, it pulls it out, mm -hmm. right? Because if it's too close, right? You yep. would you'd hit it on the uh, yep. on the saw. Hmm. Oh, you're gonna cut it with the parting blade. Yep. So I'm gonna yeah, I'm just gonna cut that off with oh, the parting there you blade. Go. I mean yeah, like what, what Kurt said, you could use a um, a jeweler's saw if or you're, any if you're an animal. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. an animal and you just want to just hack away no, at it. Yeah, terrible tech like yeah. me. Then you would just <laughs> uh oh, rotate your phone. My phone is rotated. All right, so we're just parting that off. Three, two, one. There it goes. Nice. All right. All right. So I just clean that up just a little Oops. bit. You can see the part where I cut. You can see that yep. there. Yep. A little, little spot in the middle. All right, just take a little bit of a file just to kind of clean that little nub off in the middle. Nice work. Just cut it off a little bit. Now, this is where people people ask, how do you make the slots? Um, what I do is I will take a needle file, and this is a triangular needle file, and I will make a little groove for my jeweler saw to follow. So there we are. If you came here for oiling your instrument. That's right. Whoa, <laughs> oh, you wow. in? This is wow. how you oil your instrument, folks, that have and just come in. And here is how you completely yeah. ruin it if you need to make some rods for it. Okay. Or make it wonderful. And the reason why I do it with the file first is so it's a little bit easier for the salt to actually follow in that okay. channel. Okay. So here we are. And there he is, cutting the slot. Okay. 
and I don't go very deep. I go probably no more than um, two blade depths. Not so much widths, but depths. Is that blade right cutting in the backstroke or the forward stroke? It is cutting in the backstroke. The backstroke. Okay, all right. Yes. I saw the, okay. the stuff come out on the four. I guess I never noticed that before because okay. I'm not looking from this angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was but, like, wow, he's got the blade backwards. Mm -hmm. But there we are. You can see how deep that slot is. Not very deep because, again, if it's too deep, when you start to put that, put your screwdriver in, it's, it starts to spread. We don't want that. We don't want that. No. Nope. Okay. So I want to clean it up a little bit. I'll go back to my file. And this is just one pass. I like to clean up that little bit of an edge from the slot. So just real quick, one time, two times done. Same thing on the other side of that slot. One time, two times done. Okay. Okay. Next thing I'll do is I'll take a sanding stick um, or a, a fine file. Did that thing just kind of clean it up there? Sanding stick. A little extra flare. Yep. And then with our polished paper. And there we are. Takes it out of the collet holder in the lathe. There wow. Fresh rod. Wow. And you can see there's our slot. Let's see. Up a little bit. Okay. There's there the is. slot. And there's the, our threads. There's our threads. Ryan, that looks there great. There you go. Nice work. New rod. Okay, cool, cool. And I and think, I think we, we did it. I think right? that's it. Another successful uh, live Wednesday. All right, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's Ryan Walker right there. Yes. And I'm Kurt Othrak. <laughs> All right. Take care. Happy repairing.